welcome to another day of Adobe Live. Today is day two with Nicholas here. Hi, Nicholas. Hey, hey. How are you? Day two. How's it going? <laughs> Woohoo! We're all feeling it. I see so many friends in the chat saying hi already. Of course, we have Cody Bear. Thank you so much for modding for us. My best friend in this world and any other is Anthony Sims. Thanks for being here, buddy. Uh, we got Fairy. We got General Kenobi. Hello there, he says. <laughs> uh, we've got so many friends in the chat. Jake Green, Tara. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys all for being here. Sean Cassell, good to see you guys. Andrew, uh, it's so lovely to see people from around the world and familiar faces and all that jazz. Uh, we are so excited to be back for day two. Uh, yesterday, we created some amazing character design work. And today, we're just going to do more of that, <laughs> which uh, Nicholas, you said more kind of close up, possibly. But you know, yeah. we're leaving it open to interpretation. I'm Everything thinking. can change. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a quick note, if you missed the last Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, you can catch the second week of replays every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and today uh, we are going to be working in Photoshop. So if you guys have any questions about, I mean, so many things you could ask Nicholas, like uh, what's it like to be an Imagineer for many years? <laughs> what's it like uh, to be a father? What's it like to uh, live in Los Angeles? There are so many different things, but also illustration related things. So yes. let's get into uh, some of your background in case people are new to the stream if they didn't catch yesterday. Uh, who are you? What are you about? Okay, well, yeah, let's jump into it again. Uh, yeah. For everybody who's back again, thank you for coming back. For the people who just got here, thanks for coming. My name is Nicholas Smith. I am an artist. This is why we are here today for <laughs> art. Um, I am a concept artist. I'm a children's book author and illustrator. I create movie posters. I create concept art for films. Um, and I'm an artivist. And that basically means that I combine my art with activism and I try to help find those broken bones in the world, those things that need to be fixed and just use my art to inspire people to make some sort of positive change um, and that's really what this journey is that I've been on for the past I guess almost eight years and it's it's really just been a, a constant you know looking at the world and, and kind of reflecting what's happening in the world and so mm -hmm. that's what I do um, before that yeah I designed magical theme parks for 11 years and yeah now I do art so Such we're gonna cool make some life you've Today. led <laughs> yeah it's it's been crazy this is the art from yesterday if you were here uh this is what we came up with this book cover i think that we were saying <laughs> yeah. well it started as like gestural character silhouettes and then it transformed yeah. into a full-on illustration of just this epic yeah. scene <laughs> facing down the darkness uh, yeah we love it so it, it was a wonderful stream yesterday. I hope you catch it in the replays if you didn't catch it live. Uh, and a reminder, we are live today. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So you guys can, uh, if you're on YouTube, head over to Behance so that you can be included in the chat and we can, uh, you know, talk about things together. I yep. love how this piece turned out. It was such a wonderful uh, evolution that we got to see yesterday. Thank so you. It was, it was art directed by you, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, you know together. it was easy you're just like the <laughs> best artist to work with hey our okay, art director yeah. is listening <laughs> nicholas is really easy to work with and gives thank you, you for such the good plug stuff. thank you for the plug <laughs> appreciate it you never know who's watching <laughs> yeah so that was uh this is kind of the where we were yesterday we Texture. we actually did started out with kind of um just a color over black silhouette mm -hmm. um which started off as that, and then it turned into that. And then we looked into what that would be like as a kind of a overlay over silhouette. Mm -hmm. and, and what if you popped the hair up to 10 and it worked yes. perfectly? <laughs> and then you on the fly made your own brush and added Yay, that too. Yeah, <laughs> the little speckle brush. Man, there was so much going on. We did a, a lot. lot. There's a lot happening. I forgot I how much happened, good. went into this thing. Yeah, that was a lot. Absolutely. But yeah. it was just really just talking about the the importance of just being able to throw down some paint on a canvas mm -hmm. without any stress or worry. Um, 
And just being able to do that quickly and kind of using the add and subtract method, almost like a sculptor where it's just like throw the clay down and then you chip away slowly. Absolutely. Um, and so it, it, for me, it started as art as therapy and it kind of was that idea of just don't worry about if it's perfect or the every edge is, is clean and straight and every hand is perfectly done. Oh, the hands. <laughs> the hands. <laughs> um, but just put something down and get that feeling, get, get across that feeling that you want to, you know, evoke. And that, and that is kind of the point for me of, you know, what, what art can do and what art is about. And so, yeah, that was, that's kind of what we went into. We love the message for yeah, sure. That's, that's the message. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think everybody here can deeply relate to that. So you're speaking our language. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So today I was thinking it would be cool to kind of zoom in a little bit more and do um, a new piece, but mainly focus on kind of like the head or the bust or, you know, head, shoulders a little bit um, and facial expressions, maybe some adornment that there might be on head or neck and but the same exact process. So like starting off with silhouette, just throwing down some color mm -hmm. and doing it that way. For sure. And so blank canvas, <gasps> starting from scratch. Intimidating now. <laughs> Break it down. <laughs> you um, yeah. So, la so yesterday, basically what we were saying was um, and again, these are my, my favorite brushes that, I, mm -hmm. that I'm using. Mr. 150 here, which that I you love. made available in your Skillshare class, right? That is on my Skillshare class. So if you want to go over there, um, the link yeah. is there to download. And These you have tools. several of them. So which one is this? Uh, my Artivism class. I have. Excellent. That link is on there on the chat. Which relates perfectly, actually, to uh, Sean Cassell's uh, question that says, does Nicholas find any conflict between his children's books and political work? Hmm. Conflict between children's books? I would argue cohesion, yeah. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I mean. There's a lot about children's books that are political. Yeah, especially my children's books that are coming this year. <laughs> oh, really? Um, oh, we love to hear stay it. Stay tuned in April. There will be Wait, April? an announcement. There will be an announcement. So um, soon. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And it and they don't really, I don't see them as as conflicting because they um and you know, the the whole like political tag gets applied to a lot of stuff that is really just um the value of human life and is it being devalued then let's then let's bring attention to it and show Absolutely. the value of human life and you know as we've seen and constantly see in, in america human life can easily be devalued and you know my my artivism and my children's books really want to highlight that and yeah. so stay tuned there's going to be some some cool stuff related to that, that is so exciting. Um, but I think it's all connected really mm. um yeah so uh, as I was saying yesterday um the first thing really I feel like um in terms of gesture we were saying was to look at like the feeling of the the silhouette uh, the character that you're creating um the joyfulness the you know, the anger or the sadness, the confusion, the, you know, any, any type of feeling that there might be in the character, how can you, you know, kind of make that known right away in the mm -hmm. silhouette? Um, I would say there are some ways to do that in, in terms of just looking at the, the head of the person or the face of the person um, but a lot of times I feel like it's not, it's not as, it's not as clear cut, I would say, um, mm -hmm. when you're, when you're working on a face or a head, 
Um, sometimes it's fun just to do some sort of interesting shape and then just go off of that. And you can really add whatever expression and feeling that you want to. For sure. Um, so sometimes I will say like, a lot of times what I do is just start with a, you know, regular kind of oval for the head. And then um, I'll pretty, pretty much just immediately go into like, what, if, are there any like, you know, outstanding facial features to highlight? Mm -hmm. Like, does the person have like, a giant chin that juts out or something like that mm -hmm. um, is the head more square or and a lot of this sometimes is, is related to studio work where you know studio might want to they might be working on cartoon and they want to see like 50 different different head shapes and styles and face shapes you know just doing a bunch of different things and so usually this process is good to just kind of sketch out a lot of different ideas right away. Um, and so again, it's just really like getting that free, loose um, motion in there and putting something down, right? Right. Um, By the way, do you uh, draw from your shoulder? Because I feel like some artists that uh, do like big loose gestural kind of marks, I've heard that drawing from the shoulder mm -hmm. can help loosen it up drawing from the shoulder yeah meaning like moving your wrist less i think I, and then like i think i do some, i think i do more often when i'm obviously when i'm like on a cintiq which i'm on right now yeah um and it's a giant screen and i can like do like that <laughs> um, <laughs> the whole motion i yeah. can really like get my body but a lot of times i'm using the intuos uh wacom intuos tablet and for that i feel like it's more more all in the wrist, like <laughs> yeah. a flick of the wrist. But I feel like, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I don't feel like I'm, like I'm encumbered in any way or I have mm -hmm. like less of a ability to, to make that swoop or that motion on mm -hmm. the, on the tablet. Um, but yeah, I think definitely with a, with a larger screen, I have, more ability to just like swoop just get my whole body into it <laughs> absolutely yeah then you just start dancing no. yeah. <laughs> I watched, going uh, with the flow yeah uh there was a talk that i saw with ian mckaig who's uh, an amazing concept artist and he actually um he just demanded that he could stand up and move around as he was wow. drawing because he is so full of energy. He's just like, okay, yeah. okay. And then this mark and then this one, like, yeah. <laughs> it was a whole performative kind of thing. It was great. Sometimes I um, try to think about like, you know, obviously the, the angle of the, of the face as I'm creating it, like, and, and that starts to get into, um, whether or not the, the eyebrows and the forehead come out and the nose comes out, or if it's, you know, a different angle and you don't see any of that in the silhouette, just depends. For sure. Um, but as silhouettes go, it's usually, you know, you end up doing a little bit more of a side angle if you want, if you, um, are making some sort of like more aggressive gestural thing so that you know um and then again i like like yesterday it's like i just love the the little texture flicks that this brush makes and um sometimes it's just seeing what comes of the of the silhouette and then as i if i start to see things that i like then i'll keep it mm -hmm. <laughs> if i don't then i'll just go away from it you know pretty much the same as yesterday where it's a lot yeah. of it is down to feel it out <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah it's your eyes you know yeah they tell you what you want <laughs> um and so i feel like i feel like uh maybe that's kind of the nose and the over here on the right side nose and lips and maybe the eyebrows in the forehead around here somewhere 
Nice. So we're going um, for profile. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more. Um, or um, oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> sometimes I, and sometimes I, go back and forth between. Does that end up being the nose there? Or does that end up being like cheek or something? I don't know. Mm, totally. Uh, Sri Yansh uh, is saying, can you make a full t t tutorial on Photoshop from start to end? I mean, I kind of think you are. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys want to uh, ask any questions from step to step, I'm sure uh, Nicholas can be very kind and explain the reasoning. Um, and also, Jessica T is asking what kind of tablet you use, which we've talked about. Mm -hmm. I think it's a uh, Wacom Cintiq, uh, yeah. which is uh, a computer screen that you can draw directly onto. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, I would check out Wacom. Uh, they are, you know, uh, they're lockstep with Photoshop. I feel like they're a match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I'm going to, I'm going with more of a, big chin thing yeah and big maybe chin thing. cheeks over here rather than nose and i'll put the nose kind of yeah three quarters in the middle yeah kind of thing um so that's that and then and then you get into the question of how big are the ears and what is that? What is the shape of the head, and how does that work? <laughs> um, I can see him already. <laughs> I think that's a person in there somewhere. Sure. What do you say? I say yay. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, as art director, I like the uh, direction you're going. I would like to see it develop further. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and then for honestly for this one, I feel like there's less of a right now, there's less of a need to go into the subtraction. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, if I, you know, if I was to do something and then, you know, I might I might want to get the eraser and subtract a little bit. Mm. If I did something that I didn't feel like fit really, really Ooh. well. That was a nice mark. Um, <laughs> Every I, once see, in a while, they just and the hit cool, right. <laughs> and the cool thing is like using using that same awesome one hundred and fifty brush or whatever textured brush with the eraser, so that mm -hmm. it's like it feels like it feels like you brushed rather than erased, but it's a it's a textured eraser. So mm -hmm. same thing. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> by yeah. the way uh fairy and jessica they see the silhouette a little differently instead of an ear they say it's a little bun <laughs> a bun oh my goodness <laughs> also uh sean is starting a war in the chat saying let's start <laughs> the battle uh wacom or wacom oh my goodness um i don't know and fairy says wacom or wecom wacom <laughs> whack -em all yeah whack -em all? <laughs> I think uh, I'm contractually obligated to say Wacom. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, no, I've I've heard it from the company uh, as a you know like this is the official kind of thing, but I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> dash any of your dreams. So right, say it right. however you like. <laughs> but yeah. if we're battling, uh, mm. why comb or something why? There we go. <laughs> i wanted to like come up with the most out there <laughs> something something like that so uh, w a com yeah. there we go there you go um so yeah that's i think that's uh what that's gonna be nice i mean i'm wondering if i should maybe because i'm thinking this might be some sort of like this like um, jewelry necklace thing Ooh, yeah. on the neck. I'm wondering if I should make some things for that now or yeah, I'll just throw it in there. Love a good bejeweled neck. Yeah. Sorry, there's a car going outside if you can hear it on my oh, good. <laughs> um, By the way, I just want to mention that uh, around 11, 
uh, Pacific at least time, uh, we are going to be doing an artist spotlight today. Super excited about that. We're yes. going to be highlighting one of your guys' work. Uh, and if you want to nominate yourself or someone else, there is a tab right above the chat where you can do so. <laughs> Stephen Booth says, I recall Kyle T. Webster saying that he visited their office and it's welcome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> it Emphasis reminds me of like wah. Wah Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and Mel is asking, uh, how does painting in Photoshop compare to Adobe Fresco? Would you prefer one over the other? Uh, have you tried Fresco, Nicholas? I haven't tried Fresco yet. <gasps> we got to get you on the Fresco that. train. Yeah. I love it. I've heard great things, though. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's um, full of really, really textury brushes. I think you would enjoy okay. it quite a lot. <laughs> cool. So I'm thinking this guy or girl or whoever is kind of like leaning over. Um, got I got part of the shoulder in there. Um, maybe telling a secret or something to somebody next to him or her. Um, I feel like the distinction of, of between him or her is has to do with <laughs> is this. Is this an ear or a bun? <laughs> when I see bun, I think this is an old grandma. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when I see an ear, I think something else. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> yeah. Now we can have it. Uh, I mean, honestly, you could duplicate and go both ways and just experiment. But uh, whatever yeah. you like. <laughs> really. Yeah, I think I, I definitely want to get into some layering and, and making a bunch of iterations. So for sure definitely that so okay i'm gonna add a new layer here and jump into the color excellent got um, any colors in mind for this one um let's say hmm, i think i'll go with like a some sort of medium medium brownish tan nice for that um and again i think i want to use a um a softer brush mm -hmm. for to apply the kind of skin color mm -hmm. um so this is this is really just the color on top of black silhouette technique and then I'll get into the other approach that I do um, after this. All the many techniques of Nicholas Smith. <laughs> All the many. So on this, um, the the good thing about you know having the the black silhouette is it gives you automatically the the shade portion if you just lightly you know sprinkle some color over the over the dark parts then mm -hmm. you know you have the darker areas. And then if I apply the color fully to the areas where I feel like will most likely be um, lighter, you know, where, where this, maybe where the sun is hitting or whatever, mm -hmm. then it kind of it already gives that depth effect. For sure. Which I, I love that. Yeah, so. Add yeah. so much texture as it goes to. It's just effortless. It feels like where it's like uh, so many people struggle putting texture into their piece because I think they do it after the fact, but it seems like you yeah. just build and build and build it. There's yeah. no way not to have texture in your pieces. Add as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And for this, you're doing uh, like whatever you feel uh, whim kind of thing. Do you usually mm -hmm. think of like a light source and like color scheme or anything like that beforehand? Or do you usually go um, fly by the seat of your pants? Kind of like as I'm starting to apply the color, um, I'm just imagining that the sun is over coming from the right side. Um, and it's when I as soon as I do that, I really that's I start to add other 
lighter colors, you know, so mm -hmm. all of the color for me is going to be on the same layer. Um, all for this for this exercise, you know, the highlights and everything um, will be right there mm -hmm. on the same layer. So I can already go in and apply, you know, some some lighter tan colors and then maybe go back to the go back to the um, darker browns and really just start to throw it all in there. Um, yes. Sometimes I'll go to the darker, darker um, brown or black or whatever and figure out, start to figure out where in a, a general sense of, you know, where the eyes are. Mm -hmm. Under I'm that thinking heavy brow. here <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Ish. Um, Man, watching you paint makes me want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it alongside you? Both sure. guys and teeks. Like, ch -ch -ch. Everybody, get out your, <laughs> yes. get out your way comms. We'll uh, open up Magma Studio. Have you ever tried that? <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, one of those programs where you can draw alongside a bunch of different people. So you all have one canvas, but your uh -huh. brush creates like your layer so that. What? Yeah, you can like really collaboratively. Wow. Just come together. Things that I did not know were in the world. <laughs> Learn something new every day, you know, yeah. it's uh, that's why we talk so that we can share a little little tricks that we have. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I, I was thinking that maybe this was like, uh, it's not like a more of a jutting out chin or something when I was doing the silhouette. So I figured that I would make that a little bit lighter and then a darker brown right below. Mm -hmm. And just keep painting and painting and painting. Painting and painting and painting. Never ending. A lot of times I'll do a little bit more of a reddish brown or something mm -hmm. around the cheeks and maybe the nose and the, the ears a little bit. For sure. I love a good blushy little splash. Little <laughs> Again, blush. it's that temperature shift of uh, yeah. of satisfaction. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. It's just fun. Always a good idea. For sure. Uh, by the way, the chat is being really cute and just uh, nominating each other for the spotlight all over the place. I oh, love cool. to see it. <laughs> Great. Oh, and Laura just entered. Hi, everyone. Hello. Oh, and Oyvind, too. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Uh, and just another reminder, if you guys um, missed yesterday's stream, we have a replay for that. So you can definitely check that out. And also if you're watching on YouTube, please come join us on Behance. We love to have you all over the place, but if you join us on Behance, you can actually be in the chat, ask questions, get the answers you want, all that jazz. <laughs> oh, and Gus Martin's in the chat. What's up, Gus? How are you? <laughs> yes. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, uh, Jessica says, hi, I'm late uh, to the live, but wondered what Nicholas is drawing on. Is it a Wacom? <laughs> 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 this is great. This is yes. the question of the day. <laughs> Why? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, we were having a discussion earlier about Wacom, 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 whatever. <laughs> oh, Wacom. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm, that's, that's an interesting marketing strategy right there. <laughs> Honestly, but then you have to, you know, show it. <laughs> show, don't tell. Yes. But uh, yeah, that is um, the the surface that you're drawing on. It's a computer screen that you can draw directly onto. It's lovely. Uh, and we're drawing in Photoshop today, Adobe Photoshop, of course. Yes. <laughs> is there any other? <laughs> so I am, um, right now, I'm looking at this what i was thinking was his chin coming out which i guess still is mm -hmm. but i feel like this could also be like a bottom lip <laughs> oh could be so, yeah um i'm kind of going to play with that a little bit i could also see you know the dark being the top lip and then the bottom lip like you said but then i could also see it being a mustache and a chin <laughs> so it's yeah. like this optical illusion i know it's all of the above um yeah, it could be any of that. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, and Margaret Frey is asking, what is the collaborative thing you just mentioned? Uh, it was Magma Studio. I think it's magma.io if you want to check it out. Um, it is a program where you can all, a bunch of people can draw on one canvas. Uh, anybody who joins, I think, through a link can draw on the same canvas. So uh, it has a lot of possibilities. Uh, so check it out. I don't think it's as expansive as Photoshop nearly. <laughs> the idea is that you're collaborating, but not necessarily like the same brush diversity and like, uh, you know, all the the stuff we love in Photoshop. So it's, you know, there are pros and cons, but draw together. It'd be fun. <laughs> that sounds really fun, actually. Absolutely. I'd like to try that. Um, I did a little bit of a erase on the silhouette. Um, nice. for a little part that I was thinking yeah maybe I can cut trim away um, and then yeah I think I'm going with the the idea of lip <laughs> bottom lip bottom lip top lip and then with the little chin below nice uh, by the way Lorianne uh, has a question for you where are you getting your marvelous inspiration um, I just and I've, I've, I've been um, looking at all kinds of, you know, um, wet central, central West African um, tribal images and just honestly looking at like trying to look at my lineage and the, the people of Cameroon, the people of Angola, um, always, always looking at their features and especially like coming off of Black History Month, I was, I did a whole series of um, African features and studies and things like that. Yeah. And so I just have a lot of those, those features and images in my head. Love it. And, yeah. Need more representation and Black History Month is every month, man. Every Let's month. Keep it going. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> And then as I'm drawing this guy, I feel like it yes. reminds me of <laughs> reminds me of like these these African these uh, not African but African American like like gun slinging cowboys that <laughs> yes <laughs> were actually like actually a thing that. You, you don't really hear see in the in the textbooks or anything but were pretty awesome and there's a lot of cool history that's been erased so yeah. we need to like bring it so, back yeah i feel like it, it reminds me of, of that a little bit um but i i'm gonna i'm going to i don't know i feel like I want to do more of a, a goatee thing rather than like this handlebar mustache mm -hmm. type thing. Why no handlebar? And Come on. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. I think I'm just turning into a whole beard thing. Yes. It'd be a fun little prompt is like try out a bunch of different facial hair because I feel like facial hair is so diverse and I don't think it's paid attention to very much <laughs> in like yeah. the art world I don't see a bunch of people being like oh look at all these different you know pl plenty of people paint hair but facial hair I, I see less of yeah Bev says he already looks great but seems to be having a bad day <laughs> <laughs> I know he does um okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of this uh collar thing here <laughs> people are still spelling out different ways to say welcome <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of interesting uh oh, Gus man. chimed in as well uh with <laughs> there's just so many different ways oh and also apparently youtube says it's wa-com does that help <laughs> i think that's the same wow I would say Wacom, but somebody else would be like, Waycom. <laughs> that doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe it helps. Um, <laughs> I think you need one of those emphasis markers. On, exactly. Well, phonet or, uh, phonic spelling is like, you got to accentuate like, oh, it's a uh, deal like meal, not deal like. Right. 
be all. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't come up with examples off the top of my head. <laughs> guys, guys, stop. <laughs> uh, by the way, Sean is starting yet another uh, problem in the chat. This guy. Uh, no. <laughs> he says, battle part two, pineapple on pizza. Fight. <laughs> oh, boy. What do you think? Do you like it? Um, no, never. Not a pineapple fan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite uh, food in general? Um, uh, well, I did mention yesterday that my wife is Italian and mm -hmm. so all kinds of pasta that <laughs> are made are like, I'm a fan of. Amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, so, I mean, if you have somebody who can cook uh, any Italian food, I don't know if she knows it, but oh, man. That's the best. It's 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 glorious. I mean, so many, so many dishes. I can't pick one. I'm not gonna try to pick one. Yeah, just say generally Italian food. That's but fine. yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So I'm adding some sort of extra adornment thing. Mm -hmm. Love these colors for the for the for the top. I actually added a new layer here because I don't want to mess with. The, that layer. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times here, I'm just like, you know, just freestyling, coming up with some ideas of like, I don't know, what I think would be a cool, some cool jewelry or something. Because mm -hmm. when I when I look at when I look at a lot of these. Um, a lot of these like uh, tribal African photos, I'm just so inspired by the creativity <laughs> and, sure. and the way that you know things are are worn and and crafted, and it's just really cool to see. Well, that's like um, a a, a buildup of a bunch of other creative people doing their best work, right? Like jewelers mm -hmm. or artisans. So. Yeah. Uh, getting inspired by that kind of stuff is it's just a treasure trove of other yeah. people's inspirations and creativity. Yeah. And then I, I'm, I'm going back to the, the skin layer now. Um, the, the, another thing I love about this expressions and characters is that the eyebrows, I feel like do so much. Mm -hmm, um, for sure. And a lot of times I just, I just try really quick, different, eyebrow shapes to to see um you know how exactly I want you know what kind of look I want to give yeah what expression gets conveyed yeah. like automatically if I feel like it, there's it, there's a feeling of too much anger or you know something like that I'll just flip the eyebrows up absolutely then, yeah just, it's like oh <laughs> okay cool for sure yeah. Uh, it's funny because yeah you have the brow ridge and the second you add eyebrows above that it just it completely changes the expression it's so fast yeah and again I, I i try to be just very quick and loose with um any anything that i'm applying because i i don't it, it becomes more stressful like the whole the whole point of this yesterday i was saying the whole point of this for me started off as like just being expressive with the art and if it starts to get like stressful in terms of wanting it to be exactly perfect then I feel like it's defeating the purpose so for sure um so a lot of times I'm just and I've, I've created a new layer for these eyes just because I felt like it um oh, I love those eyes but, but yeah just throwing in some really quickly i i am amazed by your like accurate placement of features and everything without using a sketch like it's all uh, just create like you're sculpting right now that's sculpting. amazing <laughs> and you know you might you might decide that you you do want to use um a bunch of different layers in terms of like wanting to be able to move stuff around like i could 
you know, paint in the nose in one layer so I could easily move it around. Um, mm -hmm. But for this, I'm just gonna just go with it and see. Totally. See what happens. Just like yesterday, we were lasso tool and arms and things like Lassoing. that all over the place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No yeah. rules, just right. <laughs> so like, yeah. So like this. I mean, what's underneath that? Yeah. See, I wouldn't probably move this now because it's all one, um, one uh, kind of skin layer. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I literally just do that or I will do um, command option and kind of duplicate if I need to move mm, over. Yeah, 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 totally. And just really like kind of like fudge it over. Then you got that background nose to yeah. <laughs> not break up the skin, for sure. Yeah. Um, so it just depends kind of on on how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Fairy was wondering, uh, do you use any references? And if so, how do you use them? Mm -hmm. um, how do I use them? Um, <laughs> I... I, I always, I mean, I have tons of references. I have tons of like mood boards that I create and just always looking for artists who are kind of like a lot. Usually it's traditional artists who are painting in on canvas because mm -hmm. a lot of my pieces, I want them to feel like acrylic on canvas. So I'll just like pull a lot of images of actual, you know, oil paintings or acrylic paintings and really just like study the textures mm -hmm. and just go off of that in a sense for sure yeah love to hear it um also mel has a question i don't know if you want to uh, like get into this at all but uh it says they say uh regarding publishing children's books mm -hmm. how do you decide which companies to approach with your artwork and stories so maybe just a little bit about how um how your career in children's books has gone as in like how do you how do you get into that <laughs> yeah um i mean the only advice i can really give is um start to start to look at the the styles that you would want your your children's book to be um the style that maybe it's just your traditional style um but also i started asking around a lot to see like you know what what is it like that a lot of publishers are looking for a lot of the answers that i got were like make it cute like learn how to make cute stuff <laughs> for sure I know to make really cute skill. Stuff. um <laughs> animals and stuff like that um but the my big breakthrough for me just it came when I was just putting my artwork out there on social media and then I was contacted by a publisher so I um I would suggest to keep constantly putting your work out there mm -hmm. um and for me it was during the 2016 Olympics and I made some art of Simone Biles and a bunch of other women who won gold medals. And then Love it. I was contacted by a publisher and they asked me to turn that artwork into a book in three Whoa. weeks. And, <laughs> and that's by the way. how it happened. <laughs> and so, I don't know. I think, I mean, I think a lot of these, a lot of these publishers though, they have ways um, on their websites to submit um, to submit stories and I think they're always looking for you know new fresh perspectives and um, I would also say to, to young artists out there to like you know don't don't think that your art or your style has to be one thing or look like exactly one way especially if you have a very unique approach um, just you know be comfortable with the you know your unique style if it's if it's what you like to do mm -hmm, for sure um, and I would hope that you know somebody would take note and if they don't then put it in their face all the time <laughs> until they take note until um, you're undeniable right That's yes what to say. Like, yeah make it yeah. so that you have to be hired <laughs> that's right yeah. So there's the 
skin layer. No, oh, that's interesting. Ooh, just the eyes. Mm. Uh, by the way, we're getting a lot of comments saying that they absolutely love the colors and the jewelry that you're doing. So good. Oh, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Mel says, wow, that is crazy fast. Thank you for that perspective and your experience. This is very oh. helpful. Uh, that oh, gives cool. me a better insight to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you, Nicholas. Awesome. Ah, Thank you. Hear it. <laughs> Just do some sort of a... Implied shoulder. <laughs> yeah, something over there. Love it. And I love that you chose to do, uh, yesterday we had a full body silhouette and today we're doing a close up because it really shows not only the range of your yeah. skills, but also just a completely different aspect of art, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. like how those same uh, techniques can be applied to different subject matters. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I'm gonna, uh, at this point, a lot of times I just like, keep um going kind of more wild with uh just ideas on what you know what the design is might be um some sort of handcrafted um necklace or something like that mm -hmm. and this is based on some of the stuff that you've seen in your research before right so like yeah uh, I've heard it termed a visual library where you uh, you have a memory of how this kind of thing looks. You've probably yeah. drawn it before, so yeah. I I mean, some of this stuff, like I I I don't know that I've ever seen anything specifically like this. Mm -hmm, totally. <laughs> I was like kind of making it up, but uh, definitely the idea of. I think I've seen something like this before. Yeah, like the idea yeah. of the construction, not necessarily yeah. the exact design. Yeah. Just super cool. I oh. love how you connected the ones on the head. Thank you. And again, a lot of times I'll just, it's the same brush. I'll just like make it smaller and do that. And then mm -hmm. might um, make a lighter color for a little bit of highlights to give um, a little bit more of a, of a 3D feel or make it feel like some, a real, you know, material of plastic or I don't know, might be cloth or something. Mm -hmm. uh, Fairy is convinced that this looks like Will Smith. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, by the way, thank you, Cody, for reminding us all. Uh, in a little less than 45 minutes, we're going to be doing an artist spotlight. Uh, if you would like to nominate yourself or someone else uh, for a future spotlight, there is a tab right above the chat where you can do so. Also, sometimes I, I feel like if I need to add something ben below, I'll just like throw a layer underneath. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, Save. I just saved. Remember to save your work. Everybody <laughs> save. Save. <Control> save. <laughs> I was wondering if I might need a little extra shoulder or something there. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just put made a layer below. Maybe more of a reach. That's I happening. like that, that you're kind of like giving yourself the opportunity to play with it by putting it on a separate layer and just being like, Meh. yeah. What? And then if I don't like it, I, you know, I'll, I'll keep it there for now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also, okay. I love how you started on the black and now we've got black in the beard and everything. It feels like it ties it all together you know this yeah. contrasty look is really working for this one for sure yeah i think so mm -hmm. uh, more be <laughs> more beard more beard come on uh, more beard yeah exactly just like yesterday why not go oh. more hair in general <laughs> yeah yep uh by the way fairy is saying all caps save your work drink water stretch your body yeah <laughs> do it mm. 
And then um, at this point, a lot of times, I guess I'll go into a little more definition where I feel like I need it. Um, probably on the nose. Oh, I knew it would come back to bite me. I forgot to mute my phone. You guys just heard I got a call. I'm so sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> Bad <I'm> host. Good. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, man. Um, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas says that he's inspired. <laughs> we love that. Awesome. Uh People are calling for monkey paws, which is my hand stretch technique that I like to do on my stream. But you guys, oh. you guys know how to do it. You can do monkey paws <laughs> unless Nicholas, you want to take a stretch break anytime. Um, um. And let's see here. Oh, Reverb Mike says, but I have auto save. No excuse, Reverb mm. Mike. <laughs> save your work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, auto save. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need it. I think I need a tutorial on auto save because <laughs> sometimes I think I have it and it doesn't work. <laughs> and it saved nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh man, I feel like uh, it can really save you sometimes, but there's nothing that replaces saving manually because it just remember. Yeah. You know, it reminds you like yeah. what you're working on has value. Every minute has value, yeah. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially, oh man, if you've ever had a corrupted file, save duplicates. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially client work. Oof. I feel like we're going to have to name him. Yeah, everybody, every character needs a name as soon as it, Gotta you know, happen. start to. Uh, do you know of any uh, traditional African names? um there's a ton yeah i imagine um, <laughs> Just the, like... the the first come that come to mind are tolani and uh tanuke who are a couple of my friends that love it in philly those are beautiful names uh my son's middle name, Amari. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one also. <laughs> Little nose highlight, gotta have it. <laughs> yeah. I always love adding highlights so much. It's like a little satisfying ding. <laughs> Maybe even a nose ring? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Hmm, let me see. I don't know. This is the thing I always go into with like character design. It's like decoration, decoration, decoration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous but fun. <laughs> it is. Cody says, I accidentally told my computer that I didn't want it to save and lost two hours of work. Always uh, save manually, even if you have autosave. Yeah. That's tough. Unfortunate. At least it was only two hours. You know, sometimes it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Sim says he's doing hand stretches right now. Good job. Woohoo. <laughs> Again, face paint because yes. Yes, face paint. I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> are we going to get any face paint today? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, and so let me see. Also with, with hair, I, I like to just grab some lighter gray or white and then speckle in some random flecks here and there for sure um sometimes I, I, I do it more squiggly sometimes i don't want it to be like super detailed and i'll just like grab a a textured brush and kind of go over it yeah swipe through a little bit yeah it's also another fascinating facet of facial hair is the multicolor, uh, multicolored or valued uh, aspect to it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, as people uh, age, they can have more grays. Sometimes people just have grays naturally at any age. Uh, and mm -hmm. I've been reading about <laughs> this is what I read about uh, <laughs> different genealogy that can go into um, beard hair because 
Uh, my partner James has a ton of like red and blonde right at the front of his. And it's hmm. like, where did that come from? <laughs> it's yeah. very curious. So uh, I read yeah. a thing about uh, like recessive genes and parentage and stuff that can bring out um, unexpected or otherwise non like uh, you know hair color that you don't have anywhere else wow that's interesting yeah only in the beard it's like a unique part of the human physiology that you can have very unique uh beard hair colors <laughs> interesting so even more character design potential <laughs> yeah and then a lot of times i'm just like um going with the lighter lighter color with um sometimes it's this this cool brush 300 not 150 <gasps> 300 it's a different friend. um and so this <laughs> this brush is like very Ooh, it's like yeah. sandpapery i nice. guess mm -hmm. um and so i'll just grab a, a lighter color and just for just for some texture because i i just prefer things to be like textury and not super smooth yeah. I think that's part of wanting my pieces to, to feel like they're on a canvas. For sure. Um, and so sometimes I'll just do that uh, in different places. Do you ever paint traditionally? Yes. Nice. Do. do you prefer acry uh, acrylics? Um, I, yeah, I, I'm always pretty much always using acrylic on canvas. Nice. Um, Fantastic. Love acrylics. Yeah. There's so much fun in the traditional art world. I hope you guys are uh, experimenting for sure. Cool. So um, I think that's looking Absolutely pretty beautiful. interesting. <laughs> what do you think? I love it. I think this is a beautiful portrait. Does he have a name? Yeah. Uh, I think we were talking about uh, individual, well, here, bonus, uh, go, sorry, Ugh. rewind, brain work. Golden <laughs> Rose says, bonus if you share the culture and country a name came from to give the character a deeper backstory. So if we knew like uh, a specific mm. uh, area that this person yeah. comes from, maybe we could come up with like, you know, we can Google names real quick. Yeah. Or if you know uh, regional African names, that would be really cool. Um, yeah, I think I'll just go with Tolani. Tolani, excellent. Uh, and Margaret says, it's really interesting to watch how you use the undo button so fast and so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I have become a pro. <laughs> yes. Uh, they say, it seems like a really important part of the style, making it less costly to experiment, which is an interesting way to think of it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's very helpful to to get used to that. Absolutely, yeah. I think everybody's uh, workflow comes from a lot of experience. It's never just yeah. a oh yeah, I found it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, got experiment. Yeah, a lot of times that's that's how it is for me. Like I, I literally I keep my hand on the command Z a lot of times. For sure. Um, yeah, you got the keyboard like, on the left hand. <laughs> and it's just like. Sometimes it's like, I, I need this curve right here. Like, I need this curve to be right. No, not right, not right, right, not right, not right. And I just like literally will keep going back and forth until it's exactly like I want it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've uh, heard uh, my partner, James, is also an artist. And uh, I've heard him do control Z <laughs> so many times before yeah. when it's like <laughs> line, undo, line, undo. But uh it's all in what you're doing, you know, if it's like final line work, if you're, if you're looking for a specific uh, part of the silhouette or something, it might be more important, but a lot of your marks, you're just free flowing as well. So it's definitely a balance, I think. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. You went to like almost abstract lines going down the side, like. Yeah. Starting to just like let the, let the wild, um, necklace design kind of run away with itself and do all kinds of things yeah finds its own way yep <laughs> um so yeah so this is uh i would say 
I think it's in a good spot. For sure. I agree. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe I'll do uh, what I did last time, mm -hmm. which is now go into more of the overlay look and Different see how technique. that might work. Absolutely. Again, I feel like this with a really hard color brush on top of a really hard black silhouette, it's like it feels very concrete. Um, and you and that might be helpful in many situations. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also, you know, there's a more like washy color overlay that mm -hmm. I'm going to try now. And so. So like same character idea, but a different painting technique. And I mean, you can obviously experiment with the character as well. Yeah. You could do whatever you like. So that's that. Uh, By the way, we have about a half hour until the artist spotlight. Okay. And then there's there's time after that as well. So there's plenty of, uh, you know, if you want buttoning up time or whatever, you got it. Okay, cool. Oh, Anthony so Jackson see. says the jewelry is giving me Black Panther vibes. So cool. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. Um, that was... Uh also part of the inspiration i mean that was one of my one of my main projects for the past <laughs> five years five and years so, wow um yeah in the parks um, and film related and park and all kinds of stuff and so that wakanda is always in my head and in my heart <laughs> wakanda forever wakanda Love forever <laughs> um, it's such a lovely inspiration to have too it's just so so vibrant so everything about it it's lovely yeah thank you um okay so let's uh good hmm. all right the eyes I'll keep, that. <laughs> I'll keep the eyes on the silhouette just because so they for this for this one i'm gonna lighten the I don't know what that is. Just a little bit of errant color, but you can always yeah. uh, fill. Have you ever used the pixel locking tool? Um, Probably not. Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the that? top of your layers panel, it has the uh -huh. word lock and right next to it, there's a bunch of symbols. Oh, and uh, the first one is a pixel lock. So you can, uh, if you click that, then the layer that you're on has a little lock symbol on the right side that shows up. And it mm -hmm. just means that you mm -hmm. can paint in uh, or fill with any color and it won't go outside the pixels that you already have down. So if you ever want just like one color Love or to it. paint fast and easy without worrying about the edges, then it's a good tool. Love it's basically it. like a clipping mask, but on okay. the same layer. <laughs> I will have to try that. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to make it kind of medium grayish and then rather than apply the you know the color directly I'm going to go to overlay and kind of see how we can do uh, a color wash like we did yesterday mm -hmm. um, see gradient how that tool to look. Coming gradient <laughs> coming through and so this will probably be more so over the majority there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, Laura sa uh, says that they just came in or are very curious about the uh, brushes you're using, which thank you to Cody oh. uh, posting the Skillshare class yeah. so that uh, <laughs> everybody can get those brushes if they want to join your Artivist Skillshare, which already sounds like such a treat. Yes. Uh, and also Veronica says, this is very cool. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. So I kind of just did a little color wash there. Mm -hmm. Super um, fast. I'm going to do a little bit more here. Yeah. And <laughs> then let's see. People in the chat are just learning about uh, the pixel locking tool along with you. I'm so glad. Uh, there's so many tricks in Photoshop for so many different things. Uh, so as long as you're tuning into Adobe Live, you'll probably learn something new. You never know. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. This is so then, a lighter color on the overlay layer. So I am adding a new layer on top of okay. the overlay. Um, I'll make it a screen. And then from here, I'll just use, yeah, use the some more kind of like that soft brush to, mm -hmm. to do some, some highlights there. For sure. Getting that a slight room light effect. Yeah. Or if I feel like I'm gonna look at the other one again. Okay. Oh, Tara's asking, will you have future Skillshare classes? Hmm? Future <laughs> Skillshare classes. It's possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> People are asking um. for it. There is a demand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all uh, talking in the chat about uh, learning new tricks. I just remembered one of my favorite ones. Um, if you want your brush to also be your eraser brush, you can press the tilde key, which is on your keyboard underneath the escape key, the one with the little squiggle, and it will become a, an eraser of whatever brush you're using. So real easy way to just go back and forth, like color, press it, erase. Oh. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're using these really textural brushes, it can be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and then I think I'm going to do an overlay layer, a little bit lighter, maybe 75%, um, just to get in some of the, some other details in there, some, some of the darker parts. Five o'clock shadow coming in hard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, outside of uh, making art and I mean, I guess traditional or digital painting, uh, do you have any hobbies that you like to do? Um, um raising a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Raising, great hobby 10 out of 10 raising a baby <laughs> that's seven months old understandably um, yeah um and you know just i mean pre pre-pandemic it was nice to do to do things in general to go out <laughs> my hobby was doing things doing things in the pandemic <laughs> going places too relatable hiking <laughs> all that oh, kind of hiking, stuff yes yeah, we still try to get in some some hikes though. But, For sure, it's a good way um, to still socially distant and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Well, and still uh, down in LA, I I think uh, some of the hiking spots are absolutely breathtaking, and it's kind of amazing. Like, yeah. oh, city to this, what? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh tara is asking what are you watching on netflix or disney plus <laughs> Ooh, we watched wandavision <gasps> and it was like well i wasn't i wasn't ready for yeah <laughs> for WandaVision. So cool. that was really cool i was really hyped for that one and it did not disappoint <laughs> oh. if you guys haven't seen it yet watch it no spoilers allowed in the chat that's the no rule. spoilers <laughs> And we've got about 20 minutes left before the uh, artist spotlight. If you guys want to be spotlit or <laughs> mm. uh, nominate someone else to be spotlit, then uh, go to the artist spotlight tab above the chat and you can do so. So for this, for for the, the kind of like light and airy um, approach, I feel like a lot of times I'm just throwing in a bunch of different values and, and just until, until they basically just continue to build up on each other until mm. it looks something like I want, you know? Absolutely. And this is an overlay layer, right? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just love seeing it evolve. It's so fascinating to see your technique because it's like, 
I feel like I see every part of it and it makes sense, but it still comes together as more of this than the sum of its parts somehow, yeah. <laughs> which oh, is really you. cool. Okay. And uh, for some reason, whenever I do this uh, overlay technique, I feel like it automatically gets a little bit more childlike. Mm, yeah. Um, and then the features for me become a little bit more um, like I would do in a, in a children's book, you know? Bringing that cuteness factor. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Do you have any techniques that you would say for cuteness? Like we were talking about before, that was kind of a prerequisite <laughs> for children's books. So cuteness techniques. Yeah. That's your next um, Skillshare class, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's, I think it's a lot of times, um, like, hmm, I I do kind of this like bringing the nose up. For me, help like the eyes, yeah. and then bringing the nose up a little higher than rather than it being down here. Oh my gosh, that's already so adorable. Um, Reminds me of the face from Bao. Did you see that short? Uh, yeah, that was really cool. So cute. Yeah. But I think for, for especially for little kids, I think that is, is helpful. For sure. To, you know, um, and that's just like one quick thing. <laughs> uh, but um, it's hard to say exactly. I like also like like the 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 little chocolate chip eyeballs. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's such a cute way to put it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Those are fun. Get For into sure. the chocolate chip eyeballs. Get into it. Their if face is a cookie. Thing. <laughs> if that's your thing. <laughs> it's totally my thing. I love dot eyes. They're great. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Veronica is asking, will you be teaching your son about art? My son loves to draw mm. and paint with me now. It's fun bonding. Absolutely. <laughs> All the time. I definitely will. I'm not going to like tell him that he has to be an artist, but <laughs> we're definitely going to make art. Uh, by the way, I'm starting to train you and giving you <laughs> I wish I had, you know. <laughs> right. But I do think that that is a... Uh, like as you said art is therapy there is no yeah. wrong way to be like hey you want to draw right <laughs> like, it's always good <laughs> and kids just naturally do that you know it's oh my gosh yeah do. want to meet the most creative people on the planet talk to a kid yeah oh it's eyebrow time this eyebrow time <laughs> Everyone pay attention. <laughs> eyebrow time. Oh, should we start a chant? Eyebrow time. Eyebrow time. <laughs> I love it. This is a stern person now. Hmm. Yes. He's a, a father or something. <laughs> Talking to his child who just messed up. They said art is not cool. And then he's like, what? What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Cody Bear says, uh, Cody Bear is also a children's book illustrator. You should definitely check out her work. It's amazing. Uh, she says, chocolate chip eyeballs are my bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm very clever. <laughs> oh, man. oh thomas is saying wandavision caught me by surprise oh yeah i'm glad <laughs> seriously i feel like there's huge um freedom uh now in the marvel universe to do very creative storytelling and you can see yeah. it in so many of their most recent uh projects and everything it's just it's amazing yeah i want it to continue <laughs> for sure Oh, and uh, I think right now they're starting Winter Soldier, Cap uh, or wait, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. And then um, I haven't watched any of that. Usually we wait for two episodes to build up so we can watch more than just one. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, and then Loki after that. I'm very excited for all the things. We've got about 15 minutes left before the artist spotlight today, by the way. Cool. 
<gasps> Cutting the beard back. No. <laughs> and, uh, I I just I just was thinking like, man, it would be it would be cool if I if I could do like uh I could make this a woman. And so I'm gonna like see if I can <laughs> reverse it. <laughs> Shave that off. I want to see how fast I can try to transform this. All right, we'll time it. Okay. <laughs> no, I think that's an awesome idea, especially if you're going for variety uh, between the two pieces. Or I should should say like the methods of rendering. I should you know suppose. <laughs> Uh, and Mikkel, uh, sorry if I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong, says, uh, does Nicholas make his own brushes? And we actually made one yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of crazy and on the fly, yeah. but works so perfectly somehow. Um, so if you want to catch the replay, it is on here uh, on Behance. You can catch it. And uh, basically, I mean, you make your own brushes in a really fast way by just um, manipulating brushes that you already have. Right. So like, yeah making the scattering different uh spacing yeah, just, out the uh, yeah doing messing. that and messing with that messing with the texture just beep boop bop done some so. of that stuff and then boom you have a new brush and then you can save it and all that mm -hmm. and also obviously i um i wanted to incorporate the the bun action so Oh, yeah. yeah. Forgot about the bun. Can't forget about the bun. Can never forget about the bun. Although I do love a good shaved head. That would be amazing as well. Yeah. So many a great way to do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Sarah says it's amazing how you do the light effects. Very cool. And Anthony Jackson you. says your process is so interesting. Thank it you, is. guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> We've loved watching it for the past few days. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I was asking you yesterday, but uh, do you plan on posting any of these to socials possibly? Yeah, like I, I, did, um, I did a little IG story yesterday for the first one. Yay! And then I'll, I'll definitely do one for today too. Nice. And where can people catch you on Instagram? Um, I am at Nicholas underscore Smith. And that's N-I-K-K. O L A S. Excellent. <laughs> oh. Lisa says those eyebrows make one fierce woman. And uh, Thomas says, just wow. <laughs> just wow. I just discovered some some new stuff that oh, because I'm yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm brushing on the silhouette layer now, so Ooh. all all rules are broken officially. Absolutely. Um, we sometimes love just whatever, break the rules. You know, um, happy accidents, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was basically trying to throw in some hair under there. Yeah, something like that. So, so, so cool. Oh, Cody uh, posted your Instagram. Thank you so much, Cody. Oh, thank you, Cody. <laughs> do you find that uh, Instagram is your go-to for socials or do you have a other one yeah. that you like? Uh, definitely Instagram, yeah. Nice. Um, and... Of course, that's like connected to Facebook. And then uh, I do Twitter also. <laughs> On the side, you know. <laughs> and uh, pretty much everything. <laughs> like All the things. Yeah, you're all, also on Behance, things. which is uh, thank you, Cody, Behance, for also posting yes. that. <laughs> yes, yes, I have a, a page. Oh, yeah. We were looking you got your at soul it yesterday. <laughs> ah, it's so yeah. cool. <laughs> so yeah if you didn't fun. know uh nicholas made a soul poster not for your soul for the movie soul <laughs> if you've movie. Uh, not seen that it is a fantastic film definitely go watch it and then just like stare at that poster and give it a little thumbs up because you know yeah. we all appreciate that <laughs> for sure 
<laughs> Lisa says this is such a cool process. I agree. Oh yeah, fierce eyebrows or I mean <laughs> eyelashes. Uh, so Same thing, right? They connect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so something generally like that. Beautiful. I would have to play with it a little bit more, but yeah. That glow from the, the I, I don't know if it was accidental painting or whatever, from the base layer. So beautiful. The colors yeah. here just make it feel like it's on fire. Yeah, it turned out pretty crazy, that, that glow. Mm -hmm. Very intense. Remember it for the future. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes I'm just like, I have to go back and figure out, okay, like what process did I go through to, to make that thing happen? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Whoopsies. But you know, as long as you experiment, you'll always find something cool. Yep. I'm giving yourself the freedom to do so. That's important. Mm hmm. All right, now we need a name for her. Uh, well, she's got to be Tanuke. Oh, if, really? If yeah. there was a Talani, there has to be a Tanuke. All right, sounds There's great. There it is. Tanuke and Talani. And then, so, um, yeah, I'm just, there's always, there's always, like, I feel like, um, a lot of extra, um, finessing and, and things like that, that I will eventually go back and do. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and for this process, I think, you know, it is always, it's one of the, one of the good things about having, uh, the silhouette layer at the bottom is you know that might be the thing that you can you can just quickly go back to the silhouette layer and you know play with with you know maybe cutting away here and there um just kind of figuring out how exactly how much you want to cut or add or all that stuff for sure that's the freedom right is again you're yeah. sculpting so you get to add subtract whatever you like Mm -hmm. all the time I love that cheekbone just good cut <laughs> uh, Lisa says that she has a quote don't roll your eyes at me look <laughs> yep. maybe this is the child <laughs> maybe they're the parents and they're both just kind of yeah. like excuse you <laughs> I'm feeling that <laughs> Oh, and uh, Fardon says, uh, it's awesome to know that somebody else uh, other than me, uh, or, or watch somebody else while, uh, other than me while I'm creating, which sounds lovely, you know? We love to be your uh, creative background noise or whatever, <laughs> you know, yeah. inspiration for the day, anything yeah, like that. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bev says, what? Just a quick lunch break, come back and see a whole different character? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and yeah. Thomas says, I was distracted. Did he save the male character? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got it all. It's all here. I was wondering if I could take that thing that I made um, for the other piece and mm -hmm. kind of use it in this somehow. Absolutely. Have a matching little decorative piece. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe it goes here um ah oh, yeah it looks like it almost wrapped behind and then a lot of times i'll i'll just warp pieces just to you know zhuzh them, as i like to say zhuzh them. <laughs> gotta get it just yeah. right <laughs> um Something like that. Nice. Um, 
I always really liked the idea of neck jewelry because I'm very sensitive about my neck. I don't like <laughs> feeling yeah. like it's exposed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as I wear a turtleneck. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the idea of it, I absolutely love. Um, and seeing it is just absolutely gorgeous. So much beauty in jewelry. Yeah. Something like that. Nice. All these wrapping lines giving such form and motion, yeah. feels like. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so let's see, what else can I throw in there? Hmm. By the way, Chi says, I love the color palette you're using. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to do an overlay layer with some, with some white. Ah, I guess some high highlights. And, yeah. And a lot of times I'm just like, I still experiment with all these brushes. I, I, I haven't, I've had them for years and I haven't gone through all of them, but for sure. I'm always just playing with different ones and, you know, seeing what's, what could help me in what situation Ain't that just the way? I feel like I yeah. barely ever get through, like, I don't know, even a third of the brushes that I download at a time. And then yeah. um, I, you know, test them out, get tired, find one I like, yeah. <laughs> like good enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as long as you keep testing and like, you know, if you're feeling somewhat stuck or like you want to just to freshen up of your artwork, then changing mm -hmm. brushes can be a really fun way to do that. Yeah. For sure. Uh, and if you guys didn't catch it, there was actually a uh, there's a show with Kyle Webster regularly. Uh, it's a brush show. And if you guys don't know, the Photoshop brushes are all made by Kyle Webster. Uh, basically, all of them, a lot of them, if not all. Uh, and if you have CC, you can download all of his brush packs for free uh, and get just a plethora of juicy textures to play with. So definitely check that out. And uh, if you want to see how he plays with a lot of those brushes, because he is not only a brush maker, but a prolific and amazing artist, then check out uh, his streams here on Behance. He's on Adobe Live all the time. <laughs> so this is Talani, essentially. Tulani is beautiful. Tulani. By the way, Bev says Nicholas is definitely an artist worthy of the name. Do you have oh, to sorry, earn the name is, artist? Sorry, this is Tanuki. This is Tulani. Ah, uh, Tulani, Tanuki. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And there's Tanuki. Okay. So a couple of different uh, styles, but as you can see, the, the one that is usually the overlay is a little, a bit softer, you know, more kind of free flowy in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the, the, the hard color on top of the silhouette is typically, it just, it just feels more um, concrete in a way. For sure. Yeah. Very contrasting and uh, it, it just makes it pop a very uh, like a lot yeah. <laughs> it yeah. depends on what you're intending for that but um i right. find both of them so beautiful thank you absolutely uh by the way uh what was it oh they were saying it's called brush hour good job remembering things i don't brush uh that's the, <laughs> that's the show with uh <laughs> kyle webster which i wonder oh, okay. if he's doing like a rush hour brush hour kind of thing Bru okay Eh, eh. I get uh, it. <laughs> and uh everybody's just saying that they absolutely love this and uh fairy says i love the textured one which textured one i mean both of them are so textured <laughs> yeah and for oh, this yeah. one hmm. i just i just also love um at the end of pieces just like 
adding a little bit of a overlay layer mm -hmm. and overlayer <clears throat> overlayer <laughs> and seeing how it looks just to incorporate some more like even like a you know like was done yesterday with like some of the yeah a cooler a cooler look on one side versus a warmer look on the other side mm -hmm. um and that's again with the kind of the radial gradient for sure yeah. uh would you be willing to take a pause for the uh artist spotlight Yes, let's do it. All right, awesome. All right, so we will come back to this. Uh, but at the moment, we're going to do what we call an artist spotlight, where which is where we take one of you guys uh, and highlight your work here on Behance. And we're super excited today to highlight da, 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 Jess Telmonica. Yes. Ah, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But Jess, you are the, the one today who is being spotlit. Woohoo! So uh, we're going to look through your Behance page and just really highlight highlight your work and uh, show off what we love about it, talk about our favorite things. So what I'm going to do is start by just going through some of your more recent projects. Uh, this one is called Reflect Shun <laughs> in AR or Reflect Ion, uh, uh? Uh, which just says I am still learning the process, but clearly it looks amazing because check this out. Oh, yeah. Have you ever gotten into AR, Nicholas, or know what it is? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, that looks cool. Absolutely. This is uh, augmented reality, and it just creates a little bit of a 3D effect in app. Uh, it's magic. It is magic. Exactly. <laughs> super, super cool. And this one is called uh, Reflection. So it's it's about uh, the reflection of the character here. Look at that. Oh. oh, look at that. That's so cool. I love the way you did the the like layers of sunlight coming out, Jess. That's very cool. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. And I already appreciated it. So usually I would, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's how we do. Uh, this was actually for the Adobe, Adobe, <laughs> I can say the company name, Adobe <laughs> Creative Residency Fund. Um, which if you guys don't know, it is a million dollar fund that they put together during the pandemic to hire as many artists as possible to um, not only make the artist's life better, but to create uh, and produce these projects that otherwise uh, might not be funded. So uh, this one, the, Adobe, uh, the client was Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. Whoa, what did I do? I did something. Ugh. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I clicked on something and it went real big. Uh, so you had the timeline of December to January, uh, and this was an illustrator. And you can see that this is a, a compilation of a lot of different things that Jess put together. So this is um, a whole story on here that you can read if you want to check out Jess's Behance page. Link in the chat, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, and it started as these sketches all put together to create a journey, which I think is so, so, so cool. I like that Jess says, Jess says, I'm a bit old school, like drawing on paper is old school. <laughs> uh, and then brought it into Adobe Fresco, Illustrator on the iPad, Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe XD. Oh my gosh, all the things. Uh, and as we go through, you can see, uh, by the way, this is just a beautiful Behance portfolio. The mock-ups and everything with the iPads are really, really well done. So excellent presentation. Um, and by the way, just to mention, uh, the Adobe Community Fund is still going. So if you guys want to sign up, it's a month-to-month -month, uh, application period. And you can have, uh, I think it was either a personal project that you um like basically propose to them saying, hey, I want to make this or they uh, commission you. They say, hey, we love your art. I want you to work on this project. And it can be 500 to $5,000. And it's a great opportunity for all the artists out there. Um, so sign up today. Yeah. Um, so this is the entirety of the piece. And I just love how Jess not only uh, put all of this beautiful color and work into this, but has so much meaning behind the images. Like this is past pain, it's challenges, beautiful. broken hearts, turn bad into good. Oh my gosh, broken hearts are healing. Just keep growing, just keep growing. <laughs> uh, and then you've got Jess right here herself and great grandma's bracelet. I love that so much. Putting a personal touch in there is just mm. heartwarming. Uh, inner child, hope, and the better days are ahead sign, which I just absolutely love. 
So uh, this, uh, of course, it was to uh, showcase the capabilities of Illustrator on the iPad, which I think Jess nailed for sure. Yeah. And you can see all of the different pieces made into a triptych for uh, Instagram and a diptych for Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Looks like. Uh, look at that. So all the way from sketch to uh, Illustrator, this is an absolutely beautiful piece, Jess. Great job. Love it. Follow Jess. Yeah, definitely follow Jess. <laughs> and look at this, putting it in the hands of kids. I believe this is, um, yeah, this was basically part of it. Moving forward, what do you do with the project? I think this is so, so Ooh, smart to put in yeah. any of your guys' work as well, just to say, hey, what are the next steps or places that this could be showcased? So making it into a mural, making it into a children's book. So, so, so creative and wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah check it out so this is not only go follow jess but also apply to the community residency or uh, adobe creative C residency community fund wow that's a mouthful <laughs> <laughs> ah i can appreciate it yes okay so this is a sailboat sunset yes i read that right <laughs> it looks like it might be another ar experience where you can yeah. see this as augmented reality oh 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 mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, all the moving elements. That is fantastic. And as always, I think that um, one of the standout things from Jess's work is just the color and the vibrancy that she brings to it. Absolutely beautiful. It's a, October. a oh, fresh sorry. way to experience art. Like it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. It really is magical. <laughs> oh my gosh an illustrator look at all those little things <laughs> i'm always impressed by people's patience with this because uh nicholas i'm sure yeah. you experienced this where like brushes seem simple compared to this <laughs> yeah i mean i my brain is wired to to photoshop and not illustrate <laughs> for sure same um, here it's funny because you know people assume illustrators use illustrator right <laughs> <laughs> But endless uh, props to Jess for using the Illustrator and making it look so beautiful yeah. and adding so much life to it, making it uh, not only like a really clean presentation, but like so aesthetically pleasing. Love this yeah. for Valentine's Day. Oof, so pretty. <gasps> Galaxy. I there, love space stuff. I, I am always fascinated by how beautiful a vector art can be and and jealous that it can be blown up a million times and be <laughs> perfectly clean. No need for, uh, <laughs> yeah, like the DPI to be considered and all that jazz. Like, yeah. oof, it's annoying to do that for raster. But, you know, it's it's whatever you like to create in. Vector, yeah. raster, it's, uh, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and as Jess said, in the, uh, the community fund uh, project, she also likes to draw with pencil and paper, which is just a, a lovely thing to see as well. I don't know. It's sometimes uh, kind of refreshing to see like uh, people who use vector also love to draw just straight up because <laughs> yeah. creativity knows no bounds. Okay. Whatever That's tool right. you want to use. Ooh, I love this fall one. That's so pretty. Mm. Having the little woo. woo, woo. <laughs> yeah. I could see that as a AR 3d AR piece. Oh yeah, those leaves flying in your face. Yeah. <laughs> so just make everything AR. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Unicorn. Oh yeah, that's got to be an AR one too. I could see this moving around like a little ribbon. Mm -hmm. Love it. And you know how to pick the images, Jess, of like what is a, a cute little vignette, it feels like, you know, you like to make a scene. Uh, and I think your choices for subject matter are really lovely, aesthetically pleasing, and I uh, have a really good place in that AR world as well. Oh my gosh, cute. Love the color choice here. This is a really nice color palette. Very pleasing. Beautiful. Oh, and those music notes like fading into it. Music. Like <laughs> oh, and we got space and paint. Oh my gosh. Jess, you made so many of these. You're so prolific. Wow. Ah, music. 
Love it. And once again, that ribbon technique makes me know like this is your work. It feels very distinct to you. And I love that. Yeah. Life. It happens. Roll through the brat, the brad, <laughs> roll through the brad <laughs> and appreciate the grid. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can read it yourself, right? <laughs> oh, man. Ah, yes, you can. 101 ways to not be a jerk. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to disagree. Let it go. Be kind. Rewind. <laughs> How nice. to deal with adulting. I need it. Oh, yeah. Barbecue. Nom, 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 nom. Ooh, and camping. Wow. These are beautiful. Oh, fall. Oh, I love <laughs> fall so much. It's so pretty. Beautiful colors, once again, of course. Yeah. Can feel feel the glow from these drums. Oh yeah. Well, I guess those are oh gosh. Symbols? What's the technical term? Do you know? Yeah, symbols. Symbols? Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent work, Jess. A uh, round of applause for you. You did great. great uh everybody follow Jess. This is uh here we go. Jess Telmanic, uh, Telmanic, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it again, um, but you can find her at that. Uh, she's also got a link tree here. Oh yeah, and I wanted to read uh, the bio because I, I always enjoy what people put out there about themselves. <clears throat> Jess is a multidisciplinary, wow, this is testing if I can read, <laughs> designer who believes in the healing power of creativity. A mental health warrior and constantly evolving human being, she seeks to inspires, uh, inspire others <laughs> and it never um, it's never too late to find a voice and catch a vision. Her innovative outlook and passion for digital and traditional illustration shines through her vibrant artwork and serves as a reminder that it's okay to be human. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is amazing. So thank you, Jess, for submitting your work as well as being our spotlit artist. Uh, if you want to uh, be a, a on the artist spotlight yourself, there is a tab above the chat where you can nominate yourself or another artist. Woohoo! Uh, and we've got a little bit of time to go back to uh, Nicholas's art just for a, a last, oh. you know, buttoning up session before we go to the rest of the day. Uh, right. Nicholas, once again, thank you so much for being here. It's been just a fun time. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think um, if I had to... If I had to spend like a, a final 10 minutes on this, mm -hmm. I would probably continue with the overlay. That's the other one. Um, continue with the overlay. <laughs> oh, I threw this on here. I think that works. Absolutely. I like that, that element of different um, uh, crossing textures as well. It's very nice. Yeah, I feel like... Um, there's a, I feel like there's always more sunlight to to throw on a piece. <laughs> Can never have too always. much sunlight. Glow, glow, glow. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And then also, a lot of times I try to create, especially like buns and Afro puffs and stuff. Um, try to give a lot more light and highlights um, to the top with like some sort of weighted darker feeling on the bottom. Mm, um, yeah. just to give that sense of poofiness for sure depth to it yeah but it's like a round object not just a yeah you know use sounds <laughs> that's my way of doing things at least um make this a little more golden rather than green Oh, thank you, chat, for being so uh, supportive of just during that highlight and also of me being able to not read <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh the glow the glow oh it's so beautiful the glow i think uh it was my mentor who said the last 10 percent is the first thing that people see when you look they look at the, your artwork usually yeah and, and uh one of those things was always like adding glow you know it's one of those like little Ding, and it mm -hmm. works kind of moments <laughs> sometimes i do if it's a white background sometimes i'll do like a a burst of white as mm, like yeah kind of like a sunlight glow at, like it's know. um oh there's a name for it i feel like 
where it, it almost obscures the edge of the the thing because the glow is so it mm-hmm. like wraps around it yeah <laughs> it's all encompassing yeah sometimes it's like way too much and i'm like no not that much but like i just try to play with it and find like what is the right amount of extra glow extra glow. sometimes it's there. i mean is there so much thing as too much glow i don't think i so. know more glow more <laughs> glow that's a good amount of glow oh <laughs> sun i love it <laughs> um it's a and it and it kind of gives it. I feel like a little bit of a cinematic quality. It um, does, yeah. Puts it in a place almost where it's like you can imagine looking up at her and seeing the sunlight, where it's like oh, blinded by the beauty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, be creative. Says thanks, Nicholas. Your work is truly awe-inspiring. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys spending time <laughs> watch me draw absolutely a we lot. Are privileged to watch <laughs> means a lot and then um on the on the piece yesterday i had i was saying that like a lot of times it's just me going in with like a little bit of white and doing little speckles and flex and stuff because um i just i don't know, I feel like it just adds a little bit more texture that's one of your favorite like finishing touches yeah (laughs) always with the extra little speckles and stuff (laughs) sometimes oh sorry go on sometimes it's literally just like squiggly lines and um you know a bunch of a bunch of things that i wouldn't normally you know think about when I'm when I'm starting out a piece but I I just feel like it, it just adds to I don't know the the move like if I feel like there's a, already a specific movement that's happening mm-hmm. and I just want to add to it or I know that there's a, um, some sort of a pattern um, I'll you know in an on an overlay layer I'll use the white a, a tiny white brush for more of a pattern for sure yeah yeah. I agree I think adding little um like it feels like random marks but they're anything but random because they're like the last part you know um but it makes it feel looser in a a very pleasing way it's not like it's unfinishing it it's it's actually finishing it more but Mm -hmm. in a way that feels like you are putting energy into the piece (laughs) it's wonderful Oh yeah, all the little marks. Oh, I would so again uh, love to see a zoom in of this when you feel like you oh, want yeah. to. <laughs> Fresh. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I love that! Oh my gosh, the like patterning on there is just gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sorry, that was and too I think loud. I, I think excited. part of it is like trying to incorporate again like the the culture of the character and it kind of like adds a little bit to the backstory um, just just through a visual, um, something like that, that can, you know, it might be interesting to add little details that some, you know, the, the, the audience might not pick up on right away, but like mm-hmm. if they're studying the piece, they'll see, oh, like these these markings or something might might tell you a little bit more about, you know, her upbringing or, you know, who her status you know in the culture or something like that for sure that's everything of character design right everything basically has a meaning and right. there's no wasted uh, detail mm-hmm. yeah Veronica says, thank you, Nicholas, for sharing your art and knowledge. I love everybody's just shouting thank out you. how much they're grateful to see you work. Thank <laughs> you, great. Veronica. Jake Green says, this is a very cool stream. And that means something because Jake sees a lot of streams here. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> You're awesome. Um, uh, Lisa says, that, yeah, the subtle pattern is very rich. Thank you. 
just I, I think I just want I want to make sure a lot of times that when people are looking at a piece of mine like they don't get bored like there's a bunch of stuff that they could see and just don't want them to be bored <laughs> I don't think they could be. Uh, I also, I think it was put in a term that I really like. Let me think of it. Mm. Oh, um, it's like giving your audience a payoff when they zoom in. It's mm -hmm. uh, if they look closer, there's something to reward them with. And uh, like we said yesterday, a lot of people scroll super fast. And for those who stick around and say, wow, wait, there's something I feel from this. Yeah. Then they get that like that luxurious texture, that uh, storytelling element that, you know, whatever mm -hmm. thing that they might not have noticed otherwise. Yep, absolutely. I also feel like that vertical cut of red on the lip is something that makes it feel like she's being lit by the sun, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Such an unexpected thing from uh, all the layers that you use in the different blend modes and stuff. You got some real good happy accidents, man. <laughs> A lot of happy accidents. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of times I just like, I feel like I kind of do an assessment. Like, is, does that work to keep or should I, should I get rid of that? And I say keep it, but you know, that's just Yeah. Me. A lot of times I end <laughs> up keeping, keeping the happy accidents. Most of them. For sure. So. Uh, we've got about four minutes left. So uh, whatever you would like to say or do or anything like that, we've got so much work that you've made. <laughs> it's okay. funny because sometimes, uh, you know, on these streams, uh, we'll start like one piece on day one and then work on it on day two. And even then it's not finished. And you've created three separate pieces. <laughs> okay. So Nicholas, <laughs> cool. <laughs> why you got to be so prolific? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just um, kind of put Ooh. these side by side because why not? Heck yeah. Oh, I love it. Now they're staring each other down. Yeah. Now I, I have to believe that they're siblings now because they were born from the same layer. <laughs> I I agree. I agree. That's how it goes. And that's the, the, the Tanuke and Talani that I know in real life are brother and sister. <laughs> no way. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and then again, a lot of times I'll add a, um, an overlay layer to the top of everything mm -hmm. and see if it helps to, I, I feel like almost like connect pieces with mm -hmm. color. Um, Sometimes it's like, no, I'll leave it alone. Um, but sometimes it, I like to just combine the whole piece together um, with some and extra color wash. You'd never know unless you try it. So it's always a good thing to just, yeah. If there's a way you think you can unify it, boom, pop it in there. Okay. Well, get in the color wheel. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, by the way, I just want to remind you guys to stick around. Uh, we're going to have some content creators after us named Amber and Patty that are going to be here at 12 p.m. Uh, as they, well, that specific time, I should say, uh, as they break down their process of crafting and conveying a full story through Premiere Pro. Uh, stick around to get more behind the scenes tip, tips. <laughs> <laughs> on how to travel with gear and how they got the shot <laughs> once again i can talk i can read <laughs> good job you can <laughs> oh man <laughs> lisa is saying that they're text to or like the the it, you know what's being conveyed here between them is do you know what your daughter did <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's your daughter <laughs> yeah i'm feeling that absolutely uh, so as we are wrapping up today, I just want to thank Nicholas so much for uh, being here with us, for you. streaming your artwork. It's incredibly wonderful to see from beginning to end your entire process. It's just fascinating. Uh, is there anything you would like to call out or tell people to uh, check out on your end before we leave? Um, I mean, I would say if you have a chance, check out my website, nicholas.art. Again, it's Nicholas with two Ks. 
Never I three, want. only two. Never three, only two. <laughs> two Ks. Um, and that's, yeah, that's that's where I have all my stuff. And, you know, my my social media, it, because it's Nicholas with two Ks, it's really easy to find. So for sure. Check that out when you can. Thank you for stopping by. Um, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you guys in the chat as well. It's been a ball to chat with you all. Uh, we will see you again sometime. Hopefully we can have Nicholas back sometime. Yes. Uh, look forward to news Absolutely. about a children's book in April. <laughs> Very excited about that. Um, and yeah, thank you guys all for being here. We'll see you again. Stick around for more Behance uh, and Adobe Live. Uh, bye. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>